that there is a uh, what comes out of there is is just stunning you know a blue fish with yellow on it oh wait a second i just started youtube just well it, it is it's just wonderful uh the fish my wife loves to fish and my uh um, cousin had it used to have a boat and uh he would take her out fishing even when it was raining like crazy and they would come back with the most amazing creatures. And I can't believe they ate those either. I mean, they were just so beautiful, you know? So anyway, uh, we've got that. And then, um, so now we're going to go into the shadow part. So if anybody hasn't seen the rest of the dream, you just put it in. Um, okay. So now you see a shadow figure. Okay. So I think we got the first part of the dream okay uh the, it is still fairly large okay so um now here's the second part so uh let's see you thought you couldn't eat the fish because you hadn't seen it before um then you see a shadow figure but it did not look like him in the dream but it was him i asked him if he if i can take a photo of him with this fish is that right so you want to take a picture of the shadow where the fish at yes now the shadow is or the fish okay is a very instinctive uh part of us okay the it is is this instinctive uh part of us from the depths and it's it's so associated with both the moon and with the with the divine feminine, with with the divine eros, you know, with so it's an eros and a lunar fish, you know, and the lunar is the mysteriousness of the feminine, and uh, the uh, um, and the uh, uh, the Venus is the is the absolute fascination of of the woman, you know. Um, of the um, woman uh, who comes out of the shell, uh, you know, uh, and says, me voila, you know, look at me, you know. And uh, um, the L lunar mysteries, if you ever read, and we might want to read it sometime, uh, the book by Esther Harding called Women's Mysteries, there's this wonderful image of uh, a woman had this dream and she was wearing the costume of a fish, okay? And um, so, and, and, the, and as the moon changed its cycles, you know, from the new moon to the, uh, uh, you, you know, and it became more and more to the full moon, her fish costume got smaller and smaller. So pretty soon she was just a woman, you know? And then at that point, the, um, then it goes back to um, where, where the moon disappears and she is a fish. So this is very similar to that dream, don't you think? I mean, it's got, it's got those qualities of, of the fish is the, um, is the moon who's not conscious, okay? But she also has the qualities of Aphrodite. So it it's really is a, a, a real feminine figure. You know, um, then, um, but, but take, now if I was gonna take the picture, I, I would normally want it be, to be taken of myself with the fish. And I would ask the shadow to take a picture of myself with the fish, but you wanna take a picture of the, of the, the feminine, uh, the, 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 just the symbol par excellence of the instinctive feminine is she's a fish She's silver, so she's unconscious. She is silver, uh, she's uh, related to the moon and she's copper, she's related to um, Venus, but she's not conscious. So the anima in us is not conscious, okay? And we want to take a picture of the shadow with her. You know, now we, we've learned from Anna Marjula that uh, the shadow if if the 
if neither the shadow or the anima are conscious within us, they're a couple and then they unite against us, you know, because uh, we're, you know, the, what, what is supposed to happen is we're supposed to become conscious and friends with the shadow and the shadow sort of merges into us. And because we stop blaming others is basically what Edinger says, if you want to integrate the shadow, stop blaming others for everything. You know, nothing that happens to me uh, is um, associated with anybody other than myself. You know, whatever happens, you know, I mean, this is, this is what you learn too from the great um, uh, Tibetan Rinpoches and, uh, you know, who, who suffered uh, under communist China. They don't, don't blame the Chinese for anything. You know, I mean, they uh, are, are really, and you know, Victor Frankl was another one. I don't know, if in Man's Search for Meaning, uh, you know, he was, uh, they did not seem to, um, you know, go, go away feeling like he was a victim, okay? So anyway, the, um, the idea here is uh, that we apparently, our anima is very unconscious within us. She's um, very instinctive. So she's very close to the animal world. And, uh, you know, she is, she is an animal. You know, I mean, uh, Young's uh, anima was both one of them, Salome was blind, and the other one was a dove who could only assume human form when the male dove was busy with the 12 dead. Then she could assume uh, human form. So his, his uh, um, uh, anima uh, was very unconscious in him. him. And, uh, you know, so you kind of think that she was, that either, that, um, you know, you always think of Jung as an intuitive, but he might, his, his uh, dominant function may have been thinking, you know, but he was a very strong intuitive, but, um, you know, Jung pretty much made all the functions conscious in himself. So anyway, the, the point is there that the um, anima is very unconscious in ourselves. That's not unusual, you know, um, my, my anima, I can't even, she won't look at me or she's, she hasn't, she won't look me in the eye, you know, so it's a little difficult to get her attention. And, uh, she see up until the last couple of years, she was very angry. You know, and, I mean, she, that I'd wasted so much time, you know, uh, without her being, um, you know, me lending my attention to her. She was pretty pissed off this morning, too. I'll read you a little bit about what she said. You know, this is the important work. You don't have anything more important than talking to me. So you don't talk to me. I'm not talking to you. Okay. But anyway, she's very unconscious. Um, and then um, uh, after this, um, I uh, you ask him if he can say, I see that he looks a bit older, um, not too fresh of skin. Uh, so his skin is wrinkly, right? Yeah. I was thinking that if any anima sees this, she will be put off by me as to say, I am getting old by the appearance of this guy on the picture. And then I wake up. So in other words, my doppelganger or my shadow has, is, is, uh, um, is getting uh, too old for, uh, I mean, there's an aspect of of him that's going to be rejected by the anima because he's, you know, he's too old. But yet we take a picture of him with this instinctive feminine, you know. And uh, um, then uh, let's see the associations, the beach. Um, then you wake up. The associations of the beach felt relaxing, joyful, full of energy, and not serious energy at all. Shadow, see this guy is a as a friend's suggestion on Facebook a few days ago, what I used to see is having a dangerous demeanor. And actually now after working with my shadow, he looks like a hurt or lost child. The fish rare, never seen, reminds me more of a snake snout, prehistoric. So uh, like a rock sturgeon, 
you know. So he's a very ancient uh, fish. Have you ever seen a sturgeon? You know, uh, they have a snout like a snake, you know. And then you say, um, his name is Aragato. Doesn't that mean thank you in Japanese? Or maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Agazuma Kevin. That's that. <laughs> Is that Sorry, just... that's, that's the point to be there. Arigato means, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you in Japanese or something. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, uh, why don't you go through it and uh, everybody and uh, just now again, just if this was your dream, what would you um, uh, say about it? Uh, Roy, you want to start? Or, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like what you said, Craig. Uh, I might be getting sort of the same thing. Uh, I remember uh, Kevin's other beach dream. He, he likes going to the beach. And uh, that's where all the action is. And then the action starts. And uh, I was getting the green man. Because the green man's very instinctive. You know, he would notice the fish. And he would get the fish. And uh, then I like what you said about the fish represents the anima with the, the copper and the silver. And then the picture, and I, I'm getting like the anima uh, pairs up with the shadow. Uh, and, and that's what's in the picture. But uh, Kevin's not in touch with the green man. Although he's seen the green man, he's a, he's aware of it, and uh, but it's it's old. It looks old. Uh, it looks, he said, uh, like a hurt, lost child. It's it's not. It's weak, and it wants to be recognized because Kevin put it in the picture with the anima. So uh, uh, this is something that his ego consciousness. It, real in touch with but it's part of his unconscious that's uh wanting to have life which kevin can give to it and that's kind of what i was getting yeah, that sounds very good uh, what do you think gary this was your dream what would you oh. say so, you know, he has the collective on the beach flying the kite. So their focus is in the, is in the above, in the logos, in the spirit. And that's the many. And then there's, you know, there's the one that's fishing in the depths. And, and fishing in the depths and, you know, he, he pulls up this snake-like fish, you know, and it, at that, I wonder, you know, maybe it's more like an archetypal figure than an anima figure. Um, so, you know, he takes a photo of it with the shadow. And, and so to me, that's like, that's like saying that, you know, he's now bringing into focus, you know, he's beginning to reflect on, you know, shadow aspects. Um, and, and perhaps with something that's archetypal from the depths. I don't know why. I just don't see the anima in this, but, you know, that could be ignorance on my part. Um, well. But, um, you know, and then, you know, he's worried about the shadow looking old because he's, you know, that might, you know, the appearance, but the you know, to me, this almost back goes back to, uh, you know, the just being, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just repulsion. And, and so repulsion would be, you know, just like the whole Negredo stuff. So that would be like, you know, the start of the transformation of the shadow into something, you know, that is more acceptable that you integrate more with. Um, and that's that's kind of what I got out of it. What, well, what I, I like, uh, one of the things I think is a very, really good point you made is these people are near the great ocean, you know, near the depths. 
And yet, even though the richness of the depths are there, what are they doing? They're concerned with spirit and not the depths. You know, the, the water is um, usually associated with the great mother. You know, I mean, in, in, you know, like in uh, Genesis, you know, uh, the logo stirs the waters. That's really is a phallic symbol of that he's uniting with, uh, or, you know, that was the creative thing is happens. Okay, uh, Ian, do you, and uh, let's just say this is your dream. Can you just um, give us the quality of what you would be thinking if you had this dream? Um, yeah, I, I guess the thing I, I keep thinking about is um, the shadow being old, but then um, kind of the association later on with the shadow actually being a, a hurt young child, like the, the kind of change of the age in the shadow kind of, uh, to me, seems like the interesting part. And I almost kind of think of maybe the fish as sort of um, less maybe like an anima, and more like um, sort of some sort of symbol of maybe a past accomplishment or maybe a future accomplishment, something like that. That's just kind of my rough thoughts. Yeah, well, that is a, a really good, I mean, it's not just that the shadow has aged quite a bit and that if I'm seen with her, uh, the feminine is going to reject me too, if seen with him, uh, but also uh, that when I catch this, this object of fascination, an ancient, ancient being, you know, and, and it, it's very uh, far from the human world, let's put it that way, you know, with uh, the fact that its skin is uh, silver and copper, now, whether it's the anima or not, it would, in al alchemy, we would still think of, of the moon. And so it wouldn't necessarily be the anima. If we take Gary's suggestion, it's an archetypal figure, it might represent the eternal feminine. So it's not an, a, a being of transformation. It is, a, it is more uh, related to the eternal feminine, which would be the great mother. So the anima is a figure of transformation. The, the eternal feminine has to do with, um, with uh, uh, the more elemental feminine, you know, the more elemental feminine of dying and being born and uh, nurturing, where the anima is the one who is the bridge to the other side. What do you think, uh, Ivan? Nice to see you, by the way. Thanks. Um, so what's interesting to me is that as the fish is pulled from the water, it changes. Um, yes. interesting. So in one place, it's, it looks almost more, maybe majestic's not the right word, but it's, it's larger and more silver. And then it is pulled out of the water and it's more snake-like and brown. And so something about this, this fish has changed when you change it from one place to another. After it comes out of the unconscious. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, that was it. That was what was really interesting to me. Yeah, af after um, it comes out of the unconscious, it assumes another form. Like it almost is starting to turn into a serpent from a fish. You know, a snake has scales, you know. So it almost, uh, once it, it is... What would it, would it, would it, Garrett or Ivan, that's a wonderful comment because now what, what we're saying is that this is very adaptable to whatever environment it's in. And when, when it comes on to, to land it, in the ocean, it is a, uh, it is the, um, it is the greatest uh, fish like uh, creature in the uh, ocean, which would be. Be, if you don't count the whales, would be the shark. You know, it's the it's the apex predator. You know, and when when we bring it onto land, it turns into this. Uh, it seems to be assuming the shape of a uh, a a, um, a snake like figure or a serpent like figure. 
That's wonderful. Okay, Charles, you always have good comments. What do you think? Um, first of all, my connection is extremely unstable, and I can only hear about 75% of what everyone's saying. Okay, I'm sorry. So, um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, my Wi-Fi is terrible recently, so I feel like I might have missed some stuff, but um, um, I thought, you know, if it was my dream, I would have been like, well, it, in the realm of where the two places meet each other, the ocean and the beach, you know, that's a meeting place. I find something and I pull it up into consciousness, but then hand directly over to my shadow. And I basically give the shadow the image that is produced is, uh, you know, I'm not in it, even though I'm one that my ego consciousness pulled this up out of the depths and I hand it right over to my shadow. And that's, that's the image that's produced. It's, um, that's what I think that's interesting with the photo that's taken. Uh, and I feel like almost maybe the credit is handed over to the shadow. Cause I mean, that's what, the, that's what the idea of uh, taking a picture of someone catching a fish is it's like hey look what i caught but um it's all credit given to the shadow in this uh in this instance at least that's how, you know that's how i would interpret it um so i'm not exactly you know sure what that means but um that's how i would look at it yeah that is a great mystery i mean what why would now first of all you take a photo, okay? So what are we doing when we're taking a photo? We are um, making an image, uh, you know, so we're, we're really um, creating an image. Uh, we're adding image to the fish. And now let's say that we have this, this being that's so uh, instinctive, uh, comes from the, the, the great uh, unknown depths. We bring it to the surface. It's very uh, strange looking. It's not for eating, you know, it has another purpose. And yet it is so great that uh, we see the shadow. So we see this, this somewhat of our um, rejected side and we want to take a picture of this, um, this, this, this being of the depths. I mean, we, we're moved take a picture of this fish, but wouldn't the, this, this image be much better if I had the rejected part of myself in this uh, image, you know? So now I've got the rejected part of myself and the very instinctive uh, relationship to, uh, to the great, um, the, the deepest part of the source of my life, you know? So, I, I, now, so that was what I like, uh, what I, uh, you know, Gary is saying, and uh, uh, I think someone else mentioned, maybe Roy, that is, is probably uh, uh, more of an archetypal figure, you know. So we're taking a picture with the uh, eternal feminine, with the, 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 the magical source and the rejected, and, and who needs to be with the magical source? ego stream egos thinking and maybe it isn't really thinking it's just doing you know uh let's take the rejected part of myself the image that is appropriate here is for this archetypal feminine or this archetypal lunar uh venus type figure is uh with the rejected part of myself okay uh doesn't this start to get very mysterious uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just almost dizzy with the, with um, how mysterious it is. What, what do you think, Roy? Yeah, I, I'm getting this image of uh, Kevin when he saw the green man in the store window in another mm. dream. It, it's really powerful. And then that matches up perfect, this prehistoric thing, you know, with like 
this, um, I call it the green man, but it's, it matches up with the thing of the depths. And, and, and Kevin's passed out in a dream and he's getting this glimpse of this thing. It wants to like contact. Yeah, I, I was going to show you real quick uh, this um, image that uh, from Esther Harding's book here. Let's see if I can get. Can you see it there? It's a. Is, is it showing up? Uh, it is a image of the um, the lunar. Is that what it's yeah, showing? Think, yeah, I got the same feeling actually when I saw this. Yeah. Well, it is. It it is a woman's. Um, associating her uh, the moon with with different uh, uh, age of consciousness. See, when it's a full moon, the fish costume goes off. But there's um, there's there's supposed to be one, two, three, four, five. There's supposed to be six phases, and the one that's not showing is is the uh, is, Craig. Yes. I was thinking of the person that sits on the chair. That's that's for me was the face. That face. Yes. Who is yeah. that? Well, um, that is um, probably is um, either Toth or or Osiris. I mean, let me see if I can find out uh, who would. Who that it is. for but, me. That for me felt more. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, um, Anyway, it just made me think the woman in the fish costume, uh, you, you know, is it's representing a very unconscious, but very important, vital, absolutely vital part of ourselves. You know, um, well, does anyone else have any more comments? And I would like to do I, I wanted to go over Ian's dream too a little bit. Uh, if, uh, you know, if he can. Uh, um, summarize it too um just maybe for one last stab at that but uh what do you think kevin um i i, I don't think we pulled it all together yet yeah i think um but it's i think i we're mean getting i think close. everyone i think everyone said something so important like for for everyone said something it just rang a bell um but but there is one person that said something which really rang a bell but I forgot what he said in the first, and I think it's it's like the fish, like it goes and it goes. So I think it's something there, right? The first comment you made, um, your first having a go at this dream. What did you say? Do you remember? Um, yeah. Well, well, it was it was the uh, just the. Uh, I think I just started out talking about the difference between the collective unconscious and the. Yeah and the uh and the people on the edge of the uh of the collective unconscious but i like what gary said about it that they're near the near the depths yet they're interested in spirit what were you going to say yeah, roy oh, i'm not sure what part of the dream oh. he's asking about that i that i said something you know, i just remember middle. you made your first comment um the, your the first beach, saying, how you love the beach and, yes and you had that other dream. You went to the beach with the dolphins. Now, all the action happens at the beach, and there it goes. You know. Yeah, the I, 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 I do think you said something before that. Um, before that. Yeah. Well, we'll have to go back to the tape. Yeah, that's the thing. That, that association went away as a fish. I think it's something there. But definitely, everyone, it rang a bell. Um, so thank you. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's... I'm not done with this dream, but I would like to uh, uh, sort of um, uh, have have uh, be able to to work it over and do an amplification all by myself. You know, when I'm thinking, uh, you know, I, I I just can't. I don't feel I can pull it together right now. You know, I I don't know, but I do know. Let's just let's just go through it real quick. There's people at the beach. Uh, we're at the beach. We're at the edge of the depths. Uh, now I'm going to pull out what everybody said because I think there were some wonderful uh, additions. And uh, we are there's people on the edge of the a great uh, the great collective unconscious. Not a lake, not a river, not a pond. It's the ocean. Okay, 
and at the edge of the ocean, they are flying kites. Why are they doing that? They're uh, here. Here they're they're near the the great depths. The de and yet they're more interested in spirit and logos than they are in the depths. We snare the um, this uh, this being that that we see breaking the surface, which we think is this this ancient primordial and very smooth uh, shark. When we pull it onto the uh, surface, it has uh, it, it achieved a more serpentine uh, sort of a, a form, and it 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 seems to be related, if it was alchemy, to the the moon and to Venus, or uh, so there is this aspect that it is related to the mothers, the realm of the mothers somehow, and uh, uh, then uh, mysteriously the uh, shadow shows up and he has aged considerably, you know? And so maybe we don't wanna be seen with him because then we'll be considered, we'll be associated with this rejected part of ourselves who is too old to have a relationship with the feminine, you know? He's beyond having a relationship with the feminine. Yet we wanna take a picture of the rejected part of ourselves with the um, this, this mysterious, instinctive alchemical being related to the moon uh, and uh, which is the place lunar light in lunar light uh, everything that's near seems far everything that's far seems near uh, it's diffuse it's um, it's not uh, it, 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 it all objects blur together and so there's no clarity and yet there is a great um, energy of mm -hmm. images and soul, and then the uh, uh, the Venus aspect that it's deeply related to eros to to bring um, things together relatedness. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, it just it it just the picture for me. It just while while you're talking, it just brought me a really big. Uh, I felt like it brought me some insights into the picture you showed me. The, the female and the fish. But the, the thing that struck me the first was the face of the person sitting on a chair that it was exactly the same feeling, you know, the mouth being like that. Sort of, perhaps, uh, like a muzzle, like a dog, almost. Yeah, dog, like, no, not yeah. a dog, I'm more like a snake, like My a dog, reptile. Like a snake. Yeah, I, so not, I, not a, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, and I was thinking perhaps that image is really that fish, like it's, it's both the female and the scales, but it's also the person sitting there uh, because fish, I, I, I'm thinking that it's a union perhaps because for me that, that, that image really, I really felt that image, you know, the face that goes like that. And I was thinking perhaps it's a union of those images, a union of a person sitting there and the, the woman that is shedding her fish scales, if that makes sense. For me, yes. that somehow really rings a bell for some reason, but I don't know, like. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, so, so yeah, it, the, if the snake, the serpent, uh, I'm thinking almost of a, um, a, uh, uh, Komodo dragon, you know, uh, like, uh, you, you know, it has exactly what I think you're calling an oval uh, smile, you know, uh, a, a very, but a very, uh, uh, so lizard-like head, sort of, you know. So anyway, and then the uh, mystery of, of taking uh, the rejected part of ourself with the, with the lunar aspect of ourselves. So so we're at the we're at the depths. The the collective unconscious is too inner. In, in, collective consciousness is too interested in spirit, and uh, we, yet we so we uh, not, are not flying kites. We pull the pull the this image instinctive, very instinctive um, part of our lives out of the depths, and uh, it's um, some somehow now associated with the rejected part of ourselves. So there seems to be a, some idea of union, you know, union of the great, the instinctive part of ourselves, which has feminine aspects, uh, elemental feminine aspects, not anima, 
and uh, uh, the um, and the shadow and green eagle and the depths. Okay. Well, um, if uh, I, Ivan, uh, if you have a dream, uh, you know, I think you're up to, and Ian, um, could, do, do you want to? Um, Ian, could you quickly describe your dream for everybody from the last time? Because it was see if you can summarize it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, quick summary. Um, so in the dream, I'm in a reality that isn't our own. Um, in the reality, it's dull and kind of bland. Um, but while I'm walking through this reality, I, I come a across a place that is more real than reality itself. It's more detailed. It's, it's more vivid. Um, so I go and I walk into that, that part of this reality um, and I see signs that um, indicate who the creator of this place is. And I wanna find the creator because I basically, I wanna steal his secrets. I wanna know how he created this place that is so real when everything around it is so bland. Um, but while I'm following the signs, the signs keep kind of uh, uh, sending me in a loop. I keep going in circles. Um, and I finally find a library with a lot of other people there that are trying to find the same knowledge that I'm trying to find, but the knowledge isn't in the library. We look. So I, I team up with a, a few people that I met there and we go down the staircase and the staircase is um, so numerically perfect um, that it's almost staggering. It's, it's dizzying, um, but we make our way down the staircase and when we get down there, we, we kind of get into this, um, this personal residence of, of whoever owns this library. Um, and then one of my companions, um, he tells me that in order to gain the knowledge, we, we have to eat the fish from these fish bowls, but the fish are, um, are like piranhas, or at least they, they bite. Um, and the, there's a, a specific procedure for pulling the fish out. So you have to, to grab the fish by the tail and pull it out and, and let it suffocate above the air and then eat the fish. So my companion does that, but then I try to do it and the fish jumps out of my hand and it, it escapes. And right as that happens, the person that uh, lives here, he, he walks down the stairs and he kind of looks at us and he's, he's more annoyed and disgusted than actually angry. But he says, well, if you really want to know my secrets, you have to talk to this person. And um, he opens a, a locked door. It's locked from the outside. Um, and inside that door is, is Harry Potter. <laughs> and that's where my yeah. dream is. Yeah, well, it's Harry Potter. So he is related to the world of magic. But he's sort of a, um, a, you know, a make-believe figure of magic. But I don't really think that is uh, necessarily, um, uh, no, it, it was mentioned that this is very similar to the, uh, to you, I think you mentioned, I, Ian, that it's similar to the signs that were leading you in a circle and making you come back where you started. Yeah. But this, I, yeah. It felt like it was a mockery kind it of. It was mocking you, yeah. you know. And uh, what what came up with, with that is, is the, um, this appears to be an, an initiatory dream, okay? This is a dream of, the, of, the, um, of initiating you into the depths, you know? And it, it, it initially is, is sort of playing with you, getting you lost. Now, it, it, it's, it's on the one hand, it is uh, showing you a staircase, it is so unbelievably uh, perfect that it is dizzying, you know, or disorienting. And then it's also showing you this reality, which is far more beautiful than any reality you could think of. And that now I need to know the secret of it, you know. But that's the point where um, we uh, are not capable, you know. We, although even we, the one thing we do, we realize the library is just knowledge, 
It's not experience. We need experience, you know. So, so even though they said that the library contains the secrets of this other, um, this very numinous reality, it's not the real secret. But we have to descend. We have to go into the depths to find it in a circular fashion. And when we get down there, we know this is the realm of the dream maker, you know. And uh, the secret is here, yet it isn't even his secret. It's in these very instinctive um, uh, creatures that are in the depths, yet we can't grab a hold of them. We can't grasp, grasp it yet. And so yeah. then, then we're mocked by uh, him by showing us a, a, um, a novel for young children's uh, uh, you know, or a novel for, um, I don't know who reads Harry Potter, I guess. I don't know the age group. I guess everybody does. But yeah. it, it's, a, it's a novel for um, people, so you say dilettantes, you know, <laughs> people, people who are on the surface interested in this realm, but, but not, not in the deep, deep way. You know, now, uh, thank you for reminding me of this. Now, I'm, I'm going to do a summary for both uh, Kevin and, um, uh, and you, Ian, Ian, on this stream. I think I could do it a little better when I'm, I'm by myself. But um, let, could we get everybody to comment on it? And then we'll try to do, uh, I don't know, uh, Gary uh, and Charles, maybe we can do a dream from you next time on Wednesday. And Roy. Uh, and then we can, we haven't seen Ivan for a while. We could do an Ivan dream, but any other comments on this dream? And Ian, I'm not done with it. I'm yeah, I uh, work it a little bit. Go ahead, Kevin. And I made some comments on this dream. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Ian, um, I really think this dream is about um, connecting you to the archetypal reality. Um, I think this is sort of the main thing that's, yeah, connecting you to, uh, a different reality within yourself. And, and I think it's very profound that you're able to see the stairs as something perfect, you know, because dream does not lie. And it means there must be some sort of energy in you that is like that, um, which you probably couldn't create with your ego. And that is in the stairs that, you know, the place of transition uh, and we see this many times uh, in the place of transition is often where we find this divine energy. Hermes is in the place of transition. Um, and so we are also, I think, in this dream dealing with fate. You know, when you come to your archetypal reality, you are dealing with your, you know, what the self has given you as a director in a play, in your life play, basically. And... And it's, it seems like the wise old man, which is both a, a subjective and objective being in you. So, so if one says the wise old man in the library cannot give you the answer, and he is sort of a universal program within all of us, I think it still can say something uh, about your personal wise old man. And it seems like it has, a, it seems like it has some sense of humor. So, so I would expect. Yes. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't characterize the the old man. Very, well, he actually wasn't. He was older than me, but I wouldn't say he was old. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Um, when I mean oh, I saw old man, I'm very, sorry. It's he's he's just um, um, if yeah, because that's um, that's what I'm saying. He's both objective and subjective in that we are also seeing your personal um, wise man. You can say. Uh, because he has been colored by your experiences. You know, if, we, if we, he hasn't been coral, uh, cor, uh, colored by any of your experiences, you probably would see the wise old man within that, um, how, could, how could you say, the, the masquerade of certain persona in the dream. Um, so, so in that sense, it's a reflection of your inner, inner guide, inner um, knowledgeable guide but it's also a universal guide. And so relationship to that image or to that person is both subjective and objective, but you shouldn't be identified. That could be dangerous. But either way, 
he doesn't seem like to say to give you answer and and um, and I think this is very profound because in one way we are saying that the universal program cannot give you an answer. And at the same time, we are also saying your personal programming cannot give you an answer. So I would own up to, to that. I would own up to say, who is creating this difficulty for me to find my true self or whatever the dream is trying to do? I think it's trying to individuate, but I would own up to those signposts and ask myself, where in my life do I put the signposts to ruin the process in my own individuation process? I think it's there because it doesn't want you to go straight at it because it could also be dangerous. So, but at the same time, I would try to own up to, to this um, hindrance in your life because that's the only way I feel like. It's like the quote on Facebook. We have all the quote of those different peoples. They are, they are like the signposts, like they have like destroyed all the walls to get into their true self. So I feel like, yeah, that's a very important point to, to, to own up to, you know, what signposts are you putting in your life to not really, just to keep it turning around? Well, when the other, I just want to mention one quick, I get everybody's opinion, but I had this dream. It is an unbelievable, I mean, this is a great dream. It's a dream, uh, which is a defining dream. And it seems to me like it's an initiation and a threshold crossing. A door has opened where there was no door before. And the, the implications and suggestions of the dream are unforgettable. You know, what, what do you think, uh, Roy and Gary and Ivan and Charles? Yeah. Maybe if we can. Uh, no doubt, it, it was an initiation dream. Uh, it, it reminds me of uh, Hermes, uh, not Hermes, but uh, Prometheus, stealing fire, fire from the gods. It also reminds me of uh, the Grail, Parsible. Uh, I think he saw what he was looking for. It was the stairs, like Kevin was talking about. He didn't recognize it, just like. Parsable didn't ask the question. So he's going to have to go back, like Parsable did. He's going to have to remember the stairs. He's going to have to recognize what he saw when he sees it again. I don't know when that'll happen or if it'll ever happen, but that's what I would take from this dream if it was mine. Not just any descent, it's this magical descent. And it's yeah. the spiral. It's the yeah, spiral. the spiral. It's, it's a magical descent. I mean, it, that there's got to be something in that. It's very important. What, what do you think, Gary? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think it's something he's going to have to work with as far as amplifying it. This is one of those dreams you just can't like, oh, that was interesting, and then just drop it. I mean, this, no. this has to be, you know, worked with for, for some time. But, um, you know, he's definitely, you know, in that descent, that's, you know, that's where the answers lie. But once again, it's almost like the, the circular path down there. Well, is it, is it eating the fish that will do it? Is, you know, is it the uh, wizard behind the door that will uh, show the way? Um, you know, it's, so it's in the place with the answers. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But what exactly the answer is, is not yet clear. So it's. Um, but, but, the, but the implications and suggestions here are profound, very profound and, and a inescapable, unforgettable. What do you think, Ivan? That's, that's a cool dream. Um, so. I think that, um, well, it's, it's interesting to me that the person who has the secrets does not want to share the secrets at all. It's very clear. In fact, they're, they're trying to give you many, many layers of indirection to guard the secret. But it seems to me that the journey in this dream is giving you hints as to what the secret is. And so you're following these signposts and you, you're getting lost from them. You're going in circles. And then you go to the place of knowledge, but 
knowledge in and of itself isn't enough to create this reality. You need to know how to apply the knowledge. And you go down these stairs and they represent, to me, um, this descent, of course, uh, but also uh, precision and attention to detail. Like even these stairs, the small, what is seemingly a small aspect of it are very important. You can see that this has this perfection to it, this precision, this attention to detail. Um, and then you go below and he says that you must seek out someone else for the secret, even though he should have the secret, right? He's the one who's created these realities. By the way, was this this person who created the library, was this the same person that created this other uh, great reality? So the, the more I think about it, um, part of me was a little bit suspicious of him. Like, did he create this or did he just have the knowledge? Like, did he steal the knowledge from someone else and I was stealing the knowledge from him? Well, the fish in the fishbowl is kind of, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, it, it seems to me that maybe one of the messages from the dream is that the only way to create this thing is to walk the path. Like he can't give you any specific secret that would actually make it so you can do this. You can only do it by getting lost along the way, seeking the knowledge, having precision and measurements and attention to detail and trying to eat this fish. <laughs> well, and isn't that interesting? The who, who, who ate the fish uh, to get the wisdom? Uh, it was Finn McCool, you know, they were cooking the fish of wisdom and he was told not to eat it, but he stuck his thumb in it. And, and so his thumb got wise. And so whenever Finn McCool uh, wanted to, had to figure out something, he would suck his thumb because he had the thumb of wisdom now. You know, I don't know, do you, get, did you guys ever hear that story? <laughs> but um, anyway, it's, uh, uh, what, what do you think Charles? And by the way, um, if anybody, uh, Charles or anybody else wants to do an extra session, we can do one. But uh, next Wednesday, why don't we start with with um, Charles, Roy, and Gary. But go ahead, Charles. I think um, the, you know, I, I think going by Von Franz's advice, the very dream is like a big indicator and it's like the dream is like pointing to it and so that's harry potter and i think that uh harry potter that image in that dream is not being taken seriously enough i think that um you know it's trying to say imagination and magic and fantasy uh uh a, you know a fictional kind of imaginative world um you know it's a book there's dialogue going on there this is not like you're not gonna uh you're not gonna figure out how to get there or how to create the reality or whatever it's gonna come through the irrational ways of a you know like a, a, a wizard wizard boy fighting against some uh you know, Voldemort character. It's going to come through like characters and fantasy and imagination. Um, it's not going to. Uh, uh, it's not going to come through any other way. At least I don't think so. Well, I think I, go ahead. that's a Charles. big. Um, yeah, just I don't know. Just going by Von Franz's advice, the very end of the dream is kind of what the dream is trying to point to. So I, I would uh, use that example. Yeah, and and I'm uh, you know I'm still not convinced that Harry Potter is is yet a mocking figure, but I like I think he probably it's a seventy thirty that he is mocking. But um, anyway, I'm going to try to summarize Kevin and Ian's uh, dream and put it in a uh, email, and then if anybody has any comments, we we can talk about it in the email too. But uh, why don't we start on Ivan's dream? I, I, I don't know, we don't, we're not gonna have enough time to finish it, Ivan, so we could do it Wednesday too, uh, start out with you. Go ahead. Okay, um, so this is, it's not like a long dream, it's just a really detailed dream. I, so this is one of those dreams I woke up and I remembered like everything about it. 
So I might, after this, I meant to type it up before this meeting, but I didn't have a chance. So I'll so probably type it up in an email and send it afterwards. Okay. Sure. Uh, so uh, I titled this dream, bought a new house. So I bought a house and I'm now touring it. I have seen it previous to buying, but I now can't seem to remember anything about it. So I am exploring. The house is spacious, but the interior is a bit dated. Looks kind of like 80s style. Um, so I go to the master bedroom. It is very large and long. There are eight fish tanks on the far wall of different but large sizes. And the fish tanks are being held precariously on like floating shelves above the, the bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm concerned that these shelves will collapse while we sleep. They seem precarious and I wonder why my wife would choose to position them this way. Uh, there are also two child-sized mattresses on the floor with a bunch of toys and blankets and a mess next to them. Um, so um, I enter a hallway to view the other two bedrooms on the main floor. In the first one I enter, two t young children who are not my children are sleeping and uh, my entrance into the room wakes them. I recognize them as the children of our neighbors across the street from my current house. Embarrassed, I quickly exit outside and notice the dad from that family. He is a massive, like, so this guy's like, I don't know them very well at all. I, I don't actually even know their names, but like the guy's just like, a, he's a kind of big masculine dude. He has like a big truck, it's, seemed like a nice family, but I don't really know much about them other than that. Um, but in this dream, I've realized that my wife has invited them to be our roommates. And so they're gonna be living in this house too but she didn't tell us that. And the, this guy is arguing with his wife about why they didn't get the master bedroom. <laughs> and so I'm just surprised that all of a sudden we have another family living in this house. So at this point in the dream, I'm, I'm feeling a bit alarmed that I have new roommates that I don't know in this house. And uh, I suspect that this house might be a downgrade from where I live now without roommates other than my family. Um, so I decided to continue exploring and I notice a, uh, like a curved see-through half staircase that goes like down half a level, but it's hooked onto another staircase. So you can't actually use it. And so I have to climb down and pick it up off the hook and then move the staircase back into place. And then I notice that there's a whole another level, uh, down below, um, so then uh, in this level down below, there's a realtor talking to a couple. And it seems that um, this realtor is still taking backup offers on this house, even though I've already bought the place and I've seemingly halfway moved into it, even though I don't recognize it. Um, Cause there's like my stuff in this house, but I don't recognize this house at all. Um, uh, the couple that this realtor is talking to don't, don't seem impressed with the house. Uh, so I explore the level and it's very large with another bedroom. I also notice there's a staircase to outside. Um, I'm feeling relieved and happy at this point about this newfound space. I notice another curved spiral stair half staircase, but this one is concrete and leads down to a sub basement that is large with concrete floors, seemingly used for storage and gym equipment. Um, the house is messy and a bit lived in, but not dirty. It's odd to me that the house is so lived in with our stuff because we haven't moved in, but we are seemingly moved in. Um, I take the stairs outside. There's a long driveway and the house is very long. There are two separate uh, hangout areas with fire pits. I notice my friend Kenny and his cousin Brandon at the far corner of the property looking at a tree. It is a junk tree and on the side facing us, all the bark has been stripped, although the tree is still living. Brandon says that this is from direct sun hitting it at this angle right along the driveway. Brandon remarks that this house is too small. Then um, that was it. That was the end of the dream. <laughs> well, it's amazing. Uh, it is really an amazing dream. And uh, let's go through it, uh, but I, I want to continue it. Let's try to continue it on Wednesday. Um, okay. Uh, you, now you you buy a new house, 
uh, that you're not familiar with it and you bought it before you even toured it. I mean, this is very typical. I mean, this is, um, again, um, this, uh, the realm of the psyche, it's unclear who owns it. And, you know, here at the end, you know, somebody, he's still selling it. So who really owns this place? You know, I mean, it's, it, we, we have some uh, claim to it, like we're going to live there, but uh, our ownership is very vague. You know, uh, this, this, is, um, this is exactly the, the way our awareness in our body works. You know, we, we think we own this, uh, this thing, but we can't, we have no control of the unexplored regions. How about the heart, the lungs? the liver, all or the stomach, all that kinds of stuff. We don't have anything to do with it. It runs all by itself. Who owns those things? You know, I mean, we can certainly just damage them, but their, their consciousness is not our ego consciousness. But anyway, this is somewhat, uh, you know, a hint of what this is all about. But the psyche, we are a part of the psyche. We're not the whole psyche. So... Um, we're supposed to be in service to the psyche, which is full of images and, and wants us to become the empty vessel that is filled with the images. And, and we're supposed to bring the medium of expression and clarity to those, you know, a, a in service to that. But in, no, no, we think we own everything. We are the psyche and everything's contained in the ego. Well, that's not really the as Jung says, what the psychological evidence shows, and it shows it over and over and over again in all our dreams. And this is a dream I have all the time, you know, that there's a house that doesn't belong to me. You know, um, I'm gonna go through it real quick so we can hear from everybody, and then we'll, um, uh, you, you know, continue with it next time. Okay, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, there is a, a magical unconscious place with eight aquariums, two times four, you know? So this is a, this is a house which is very close to the center uh, to the, of wholeness, okay? It's two times four. And it, it contains the, the, uh, um, the, the unconscious in it. Uh, remember, I, I had the dream where... Uh, um, we were going to read the red book, but not until it had been put in the aquarium uh, so that it would um, absorb water. And then we could read it, you know, but two times four is, is, is a very important number, you know, and uh, yet they're floating, you know, they're not fixed. There's a fluidity in them. So, you know, it's, uh, they're not, uh, they are definitely um, not, uh, rigid, uh, they're, they're, they're adapting to uh, our own um, interaction with it. You know, we, we're, um, you know, wondering who did this? The wife apparently did it. Looks a little dangerous. The unconscious always looks a little dangerous. You know, it, 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 it's because it's dangerous to the ego is what it's dangerous to, you know. Um, then, uh, we find out um, that there, uh, and I'm skipping a, th a few things here. Maybe it'll be, we will be helpful if you could uh, just put the bullet points. Um, there is a um, two children sleeping in the house. They're not ours. You know, well, who are they? Well, they apparently belong to the shadow and and uh, whoever he's, uh, so it's the children of the, of a shadow, a, a big muscular guy who's not us, who thinks he should occupy the main bedroom, you know, not us. Somebody in our psyche or somebody in our house is who's who's big and and masculine and a little bit crude is thinking that they should own or have the main bedroom, you know, and uh, it's a little bit uh, alarming. Seems like it's a downgrade. You know, and uh, then we come to the curved spiral staircase that we saw in um, uh, Ivan, uh, Ian's dream. You know, um, hopefully we don't get a curved, 
curved uh, staircase in Gary's dream, because then we know that's a family dream. But anyway, it's a curved staircase uh, going down. Now, um, the one that goes down into, there were actually, was there three sets of stairs? There's one that goes into the basement, one that goes. Um, yeah, so the house is kind of a split level. So there's like yeah. some stairs that go upstairs. There's one that goes to like kind of a basement and then there's like a sub basement underneath. Yeah, well, this this one that you can't get at, you know, with like a hooks, I had that same thing that there is a, um, a, a, a bridge or a pathway that goes to nowhere, you know, but it's a pretty elaborate bridge, but it doesn't go anywhere. And yet I'm on it and uh, I have to descend off it. And my brother descends off it nude in kind of a lewd fashion, which sort of grossed me out, you know, uh, but anyway, it's a, it's sort of a bridge to nowhere. Um, and then, um, we uh, then go uh, out, there's, we go outside, there's a very long driveway. The whole thing it has a certain amount of majesty to it, even though it's 80s and dated, you know, it, it's, some, it's got some, asp and it's messy uh, and, li not, and lived in. There are some aspects of the cluttering aspect. You have these dreams a lot, Ivan, and so do I. That the, the place I'm living in is is very cluttered, and what it's cluttered with is me. You know, uh, I'm I'm the clutter in the dream, and uh, so anyway, you see a junk tree with all the bark removed. So um, a, a naked tree, you know, with all the bark removed. So it's it's something that's been kind of stripped of its um, nature skin. And we're seeing beneath it. I'm not, we'll, we'll work on that one. Okay. Um, all right. Now uh, let's hear from everybody before we end here. And then we'll start again on this uh, next time, Ivan. Uh, so, and uh, also we'll do uh, Ian and Kevin's dream. And then Charles, you, you can either uh, be the first one or if you want to do it earlier, tell me. Okay. Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, I have dreams like that too of a, a house that all kind of people are in or things going on and like, oh man, I don't live in this place. It's like, whoa, and you know, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I really like the aquarium part. Um, and, and I guess it's kind of the unconscious of the psyche showing you uh, in a way reality. Uh, it, and it looks topsy-turvy. You can't make any sense out of it. So it, it is a very difficult thing to, to go through it and, 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 and make, make it connect to something that you can relate to. Uh, so I, have, I haven't figured these dreams out myself very well. No, but this will be a good one to work on. Uh, help us all, I think. Gary, what do you think? Well, you know, I find it interesting that, you know, the, the neighbor who's sort of this masculine big guy, you know, is having to explain why they don't get the master bedroom. So it's almost like, you know, within the psyche, it's like, okay, well, who is going to be master in this? You know, it's like, which, which persona is going to be, you know, the, the primary player? Uh, so there's, there's some question there. And then, and then, you know, for the, for the extra children, to me, that's like, like, okay, you know, what, what are the instincts or, you know, what are the, what are the things that are going to develop? What gets attention? You know, this, this to me seems to be a dream of, you know, where, where do I put my focus? You know, what is to be brought forth? Okay. Uh, Ian, if uh, this was uh, your dream, what would you, uh, what, what, what would you, what would be uh, puzzling you right now? Um, so I've actually had similar dreams to this, and I guess uh, what puzzled me most about them was this idea of living with people that I barely knew, you know, this kind of motif of like, I'm living with these people, but I don't know why, and I don't really understand them. Um, I think the other thing that really stands out to me that, that I'm just kind of curious about is just the, the fish tanks, um, you know, 
why are they placed that way? You know, kind of what do they represent? I have no idea, but they really stuck out to me. Yeah, that yeah, is, no. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that, that stuck out to me too. And I, I really don't know, other than fish tanks show up a lot in my dreams for whatever reason. I don't own a fish tank. <laughs> I don't know why they show up so much. My, mine are always water and, and you know, pouring water and all, all kinds of pouring water. What do you think, um, uh, Charles? Just kind of end with uh, you yeah, and- uh, I didn't catch a lot of the details of that dream. Unfortunately, my internet keeps breaking up, but I really liked that. I thought that it was very interesting, the image of the tree which uh, the side that the sun shined on was all uh, removed of its bark and everything. And so, you know, uh, too much uh, logos, too much uh, masculine energy or rational energy or something kind of um, had, a, had an ill effect on this, on this tree um and i just thought that was an interesting image but yeah my internet's just been acting up too much i i didn't hear the dream very much unfortunately okay all right well um ivan will uh will finish your dream i want to thank uh kevin your dream was great and, and ian your dreams is uh, both both dreams are a puzzle and uh i i want to work on them a little more because I don't think we pulled either one of them together a little, and I, I feel feel like we need to pull it together a little bit. I think Kevin's we pulled it together a little bit more, and I, I, I understand. I, I have a little more uh, feeling for Ian's dream, but Ivan, we're gonna start on your dream next time because uh, I, I, I want to think about this. Uh, all those images, if you can get it into a. a text I will um it'll be helpful for all of us and so so next time uh uh we'll finish Ivan's dream and then uh Charles and Roy and Gary if you can bring some dreams and uh Charles if you want to do one in between we can do it too so anyway Charles has so many dreams it's unbelievable you know so anyway well thank you everybody and we'll uh reconvene you day after tomorrow then Okay. Thanks. See you guys then. Okay. Bye guys. Bye everybody. Bye.